A little over two years ago, Land Rover brought back the historic Defender nameplate to the US. It was designed to be the British rival to American competition like the Jeep Wrangler and the Ford Bronco. Now, just like its American rivals, Land Rover offers this vehicle in a variety of different sizes and engines to choose from. And as you can see, this week I'm testing the new Top Dog model. This is the 2023 Defender 90 Carpathian Edition with the new 5 liter supercharged V8. This is the first time we're seeing a Defender with eight cylinders under the hood. And just like other JLR products, this one here has a 5 liter V8 making over 500 horsepower. So if you guys have been looking for a Defender, but you wanted something with a little bit more sizzling performance, has the new 2023 Defender 90 V8 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we talk about the exterior styling changes for the V8 model, I wanna show you guys that lovely V8. Now, even though this engine is starting to get a little bit old, it is still an effective weapon and it gives the Defender 90 the most power in its segment. Now, as you can see, this five liter supercharged V8 is the same engine that you'll find in vehicles like the Range Rover Sport SVR, uh, Jaguar F-Pace SVR, even in even the Jaguar F-Type. In this application, it makes 518 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque. That is obviously detuned slightly from the other SVR high-performance models, but remember, this is not a Defender SVR. It's supposed to be a Defender with a V8 that basically gives you more oomph and a little bit better, uh, more of a better noise versus the six cylinder, which is the engine below this model. It all goes out through an eight speed ZF automatic transmission. All Defenders come with four wheel drive. This one here has an upgraded uh, limited slip rear differential to help put that power to the pavement. Uh, and in case you guys are wondering, gas prices are is expensive right now. Um, fuel economy is rated at 15 in the city and 19 on the highway. Go for the 110 where it's like 300 pounds heavier. It drops to 14 in the city. Premium gas is gonna be required. This has roughly a 20 gallon gas tank. So obviously this is an expensive vehicle to fill up. Up. Now, in terms of performance, Land Rover says this car should get to 60 in 4.9 seconds. We've got our testing equipment. We'll strap it to this vehicle and see what we actually get. Uh, this vehicle is an SUV, so it'll still tow a maximum of 7,700 pounds, slightly below the 8,200 backs in this particular uh, vehicle chassis. Uh, but it's still pretty good. As this car sits, it weighs in at around 5,400 pounds, and Land Rover says this vehicle will reach a top speed of just under 150 miles an hour. Now, let's go ahead and shut the hood. And you can see this particular one here is a 2023 Carpathian edition, which means it's got that special matte finish uh, Carpathian paint. You can see it's got like this satin finish where it looks fantastic in the sunlight. It even has sparkles. This paint color, however, is slightly high maintenance. You cannot take this through a car wash. You'll scratch the hell out of the paint. And you can see with the Carpathian edition, you have this kind of gloss black along the front, along the hood, along the rear, on the roof. It really looks good, although this diamond plated look here on the hood. This is actually just plastic. It's not real. It does make the vehicle look slightly more aggressive and again, more rugged. And this car is a beautiful looking SUV. Ever since Land Rover brought it back, I've been enamored with the looks of this car, especially in certain color configurations. I will say if you guys want the V8, it only comes available in four different colors. This gray, uh, which is matte finish for this Carpathian edition, which is about $8,000 uh, extra versus a regular V8. And then they also offer black, white, a bronze uh, and a, a gray color, a non matte finish gray. Now let's look at the headlights. You can see this model here comes with full LED headlights, which are standard. You, I love the halo look with the half moon circle with the LED daytime running light. You have LED low and high beams, and then you have LED fog lights. The vents that you're seeing here are functional and you can see uh, the Defender is kind of proudly spelled along the cross. Uh, across the hood, which makes this car look really impressive. The 90 is about 17 inches shorter versus the 110. And then for 2023, Land Rover is now introducing a Defender 130, which I don't have specs for. Land Rover hasn't disclosed that, but that model is a supersized version of the Defender that comes standard with three-row seating and seating for up to eight. This one here obviously seats up to five. Now. In terms of the wheels, all the V8s come standard with a 22 inch gloss black wheel. You can also get it in a gray finish. I love the gloss black look. The Carpathian edition actually blacks out the caliper. It's a Brembo uh, six piston uh, caliper here. Uh, the regular V8s will have a blue painted caliper. I actually prefer the blue painted caliper. I wish that Land Rover had painted this red as opposed to black. The wheels are 275-45 R22 tires. You're obviously not gonna be off-roading with this wheel. Land Rover does allow you for $400 to 
uh, shrink the wheel to a 20 inch wheel and put an all terrain tire. Air suspension is going to be standard. In this ride height that I have it right now in normal, it has roughly eight and a half inches of ground clearance. If you jack the vehicle up to off road two, it'll give you around 11 and a half inches of ground clearance, which is a little bit more versus a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Now, looking around the side profile, you can see your only indication that this is a V8, aside from the calipers is the subtle V8 badge that you get on the side of the vehicle. It's on both sides. You can see these vents are functional here. You have integrated turn signal mirrors. My tester also has the panel roof as standard, uh, and it's also a black painted roof. And at 180 inches long, that's including the spare tire, 170 without the spare tire, this is about 17 inches shorter than the Defender 110. Uh, obviously, it's a unique looking vehicle, and this one here also has the full glass effect here. Uh, if you want, you can also get kind of like a partition here that it kind of breaks up the glass. That window does not roll down but it gives you a little bit storage when you guys go for that model uh, or go for that option package and then looking at the rear my tester is missing a spare tire cover for four hundred dollars i would probably add that but you can see you get a matching full-size wheel with matching alloy uh, LED taillights are also full LED uh, with an LED turn signal. The V8 itself has a quad outlet exhaust. Now the exhaust in this vehicle has been tuned specifically for this model. It's not quite as loud as the other Jaguar Land Rover products I've tested with this engine, but it still sounds good. So let's go ahead and fire it up so you can hear how it sounds. <laughs> And it definitely has the kind of noise that I expect from something that looks this tough. Way better sound versus the six or four cylinder options. Now the biggest downfall with the 90 is the lack of cargo space because the 110 gives you about 34 cubic feet of space with the second row seats up. In the 90, it shrinks by 50%. So you get 15.6 cubic feet. You can see this is just not a usable uh, space, especially if you need to carry four people and you need to put lured luggage in here. It's just really, really small. If you fold down these seats, which you can by flipping out the seat bottom cushion first and then folding them down. So it's a two step process. It increases the space to around uh, 55 cubic feet of space, which is not bad, but keep in mind um, the 110 for like $400 or $4,000 more is just going to be a much more practical car. So this is going to be more of a niche vehicle. So now let's move on to the interior of the Defender V8. I want to first show you guys the key fob for this vehicle. You can see this is the typical Land Rover key. It's very heavy. It's got the smart key access system. It's got the usual array of buttons. I believe you can also go into the Land Rover app, which I don't have access to, and, uh, and remote start or unlock and lock this vehicle. And there's also an activity key that Land Rover also offers for those of you who uh, want to get the key wet and you want to you know, do water sports and whatnot. But opening the door, you can see the door is extremely long and heavy because this is the two door version. Uh, and you can see this interior, Land Rover offers a choice between three different options. This is the standard option that has a mixture of this kind of like uh, synthetic waterproof material with the suede Alcantara, which is an interesting mix. And then there's the fake leather. The steering wheel also has suede Alcantara on the entire wheel. You cannot get this steering wheel in a regular leather material, which is kind of a mistake. I really don't like the suede material. Land Rover also offers a full black leather and kind of like a brownish beige leather, which I'd probably go with with this Carpathian edition with the gray exterior. The door panel you can see has a leather material here, exposed screw heads, which again gives it a more rugged look, padded area over here. And then you have three person memory seats with a 14 way adjustment for both front seats. Uh, and you also have the three person memory on the passenger side as well. Um, down here you can see lots of storage bin. There's a 14 speaker Meridian sound system, which sounds good. Uh, and overall, it definitely gives you that kind of rough and tumble feel, but it just doesn't give you the luxury that I was expecting for a vehicle that has a six figure price tag. Now for $1,600 Land Rover will install these uh, running boards without them. You're going to be dropping the vehicle down into its lower setting to get into this car because for something like me, there's no grab handle here. So I kind of have to, even in normal mode, I have to grab the steering wheel and hoist myself up. But once I'm in here, you can see very nice commanding view of the road. And then when I shut the door, which is a heavy door, it has a nice solid sounding thunk. So that leads to a really great impression of quality. Now starting the vehicle up, Land Rover has the button right here by the shifter, which doesn't get blocked by the steering wheel, which is nice. 
And you can hear that V8 fires to life with the typical JLR roar. It's an old engine, but it is surely an effective engine and it sounds fantastic. Now looking at the rest of the interior, you can see this is the top of the line model. So you have all the latest tech features. You have a fully digital 12 inch display here, their new PIVI Pro 11.4 inch display. It also includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It looks great. It works great. Although there were times where I noticed it was a little bit laggy, but right now it's actually working very, very nicely. It's really quick, it's really snappy, it's responsive. There's the embedded GPS, which also, as you can see, works really well. It also helps uh, find any kind of uh, information that you're, or destination that you'd like. The Apple CarPlay display also takes up almost the entire screen. It's quick, snappy, and responsive, so I have very little complaints there. Looking at the rest of the interior materials, you can see this area here has a leather-stitched material, which is genuine, although this is probably a fake leather. Over here, this is a soft-touch injection molded plastic along the upper portion of the dash. My tester also has a heads-up display, which is nice. The steering wheel, uh, as you can see, has that suede Alcantara. It's a big steering wheel that looks pretty good, chunky feel. Uh, you have power, tilt, and telescoping. Uh, you have your usual controls for the cruise control, heated steering wheel, of course, your audio controls. This is the first Land Rover Defender with paddle shifters, and they're nice paddles. They're actually made of metal. They are attached to the wheel. Uh, I'll show you guys how they work later on in the driving scene. There is a nice little storage area over here, uh, electronic parking brake over here. The turn signal stocks and whatnot, windshield wiper stocks feel really high quality. You have uh, a really nice partial shelf uh, along the front of the dash with the Defender spell out there. You have a USB-C charging port here. And then this shifter controls the eight-speed automatic transmission. Now I put the vehicle into reverse. You can see there's your full-on 360 camera. It also offers like off-road modes and it also offers a towing camera, which is definitely nice. This infotainment system uh, really looks great with the entire or the rest of the interior. Their older uh, system, which um, was, I believe, 10 and a quarter inch display, just didn't work as well. So Land Rover has been making really great improvements to this. There's even like an off-road uh, pages here that shows you your weight sensing, wheel information, energy impact. This vehicle will forward up to 35 inches of water, so nearly three feet of water, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I'm just really impressed with how um, quick and snappy this vehicle is. Now over here, you can see it's got dual zone climate control. It also has heated and ventilated seats. You can see the dial to control the temperature and the heat, the seat heating or cooling is the same dial. You have to push into it first to adjust that. The cooled seat also works pretty well. You do have a heated front windshield. Uh, you can also uh, adjust the four wheel drive system here, the air suspension, the downhill assist control. There is a low range transfer case. Remember this is a real four wheel drive system. And then there's also a drive mode selector. When I push that, you can see it cycles between a dynamic, which is unique to the V8, an eco, a comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, and then there's also the wade, and then a configurable mode, and there's also an automatic setting if you guys wanna just put it in automatic as well. Uh, which again, this vehicle, uh, I'll show you guys the different drive modes later on in the during the test drive. There is a nice little storage area here with another USB-C, USB-A charging port, a 12 volt power outlet over there, cup holders, and then your wireless phone charging pad is here. This here is the refrigerated console, which by the way, the last Defender 90 I tested had the um, center seat here. I much prefer the console because you get this refrigeration, you get all this additional storage, and this is also a nice padded armrest over here. So definitely would skip the uh, center jump seat for this console. It's just a better, uh, a better, more practical way to live with this car. The seats are also very comfortable and supportive. I don't like this material where it's kind of like that, that fake leather. I would go for the brown real leather, which is unique to the V8. The Meridian sound system, like I said, sounds very good. There is um, a really nice big panoramic glass roof that includes a power retractable sunshade. This also opens up to let the light in, which is nice. Um, lots of LED map lighting throughout the cabin. Uh, and then over here on the glove box, you can see it's damped and lined with felt. It's a bin style. It offers a decent amount of storage as well. So overall, the interior is practically identical to the uh, other Defender models, although the paddle shifters are an indication and the uh, suede Alcantara steering wheel that you are driving the V8 model. Getting into the back seat, just like the other 90 that I tested, it is an annoying proposition because Land Rover basically says you have to pull this little uh, latch over here, this lever, and then you have to push and hold this button to make the seat move forward. It moves forward on both sides, uh, which is nice, but again, you're kind of standing here waiting. But once you do that, you can see the space to get back here, this is with it fully forward, isn't really that much. And there's also no handle here to help you get into this car. So I kind of find myself having to hold on to the seat, stick my foot over here and crawl in between the pillars to get back here. And then you can see once you're back here, 
One thing Land Rover needs to do is if I put that seat back, it needs to automatically come back. I don't understand why it doesn't do that. But once you're back here, there is a very good amount of space. Roughly the same legroom as the four door, 36.6 inches of legroom back here, which is nice. You have these really cool safari windows. This window here gives you some nice views, although it doesn't roll down. So that's something that uh, some of you may be annoyed that the windows don't roll down. But you can see the vehicle is wide enough to fit three people across. Uh, there is an armrest here that folds down that gives you two cup holders. There's even quad zone climate control actually. So that was kind of unexpected. I wasn't Land Rover, I wasn't expecting Land Rover to put that back here. You can see no heated back seats, but you do have two USB-C charging ports. You have rear seat air vents. Um, you have a nice padded area over here with slightly bit of storage. You have dual mat pockets. So once you're back here, I think the space is fine. It's just getting back and forth back here because the seats don't uh, move forward and back and give you that uh, any more space or too little space and it's also very slow is kind of a chore. So here we are back in the Defender 90. Now I'll be honest, I was not the biggest fan of the two-door model when I first drove this vehicle a couple months ago. However, this is my first time getting behind the wheel of the V8 powered version. Now this V8 is an engine that is definitely getting a little long in the tooth, but it's a wonderful five liter supercharged V8. And I don't want you to think that this is some kind of <clears throat> Range Rover Sport SVR because this vehicle is supposed to be an off-road capable car. And Land Rover has made a couple of tweaks to the suspension uh, to make it handle a little bit better. But with the five liter V8, it's all about speed. Now Land Rover says this model should get to 60 in 4.9 seconds. I'm gonna estimate that is a conservative time. I am driving the 90, which is about 300 pounds lighter versus the 110. But let's go ahead and see what we can get in this car. We're gonna put it in dynamic mode, <clears throat> turn off the uh, auto start stop. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> holy, <laughs> 4.59 seconds. I suspected that was, <laughs> I suspected that was a, a little conservative of Land Rover to say 4.9, but the way this thing gets off the line reminds me of the Wrangler 392, that V8 powered Jeep, which technically you could compare to this car. The noise that this thing makes isn't quite as loud as the last like Jag or Range Rover Sport SVR that I drove with this engine. But I will say that the US models should be louder versus the European models because it doesn't have all those exhaust particulate filters. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna slow it down or uh, for emissions and whatnot. We don't have that here in the US, thankfully. Uh, but you know what? I wanna try that again because I wanna see if I can get what I get on this stretch of road. Now this is going slightly uphill. The front literally lifts off the ground. 4.8 seconds there. Now that's again, going slightly uphill. Uh, so 4.59 is very impressive. It's gonna keep up with the last Wrangler V8 that I drove. I haven't had a chance to drive the Ford Bronco Raptor. Sadly, Ford didn't send me an invite to that event. So hopefully I'll have one to test uh, in my home area very soon. But man, oh man, this thing is fast. It is stupid fast, ridiculously fast. And the way it kind of puts the power down, this is all wheel drive with an electronic limited slip rear differential. Um, so it does obviously, you know, not spin the wheels at all. My tester has 22 inch tires on it. Um, so these are more road tire. And it just, every time you put your foot down, Listen to that! This thing revs all the way to 6,500 RPM, but it feels like it's revving a lot longer. And this is also the first Defender with paddle shifters. I know it's kind of a little bit of a gimmick, but when you want to listen to that V8, oh God, this thing is ridiculous. Every time you kind of go near the throttle, the thing like has so instantaneous throttle response, it's a little bit scary actually, because when you first tap into the throttle, it just goes and like you can feel the rear suspension squat, the front lifts up because of all of that torque. And you know, even though they tried to make the suspension a little bit stiffer for this model to, to kind of uh, improve the body controls, this thing feels really, really soft. You're not gonna confuse this thing for like a sporty, uh, a sports SUV, like you would like in a Jaguar F-Pace or a Porsche Macan. That's not the mission of the Defender. It is better controlled versus the last Wrangler V8 that I drove, but that's not really saying much. The Wrangler V8 was like one of the worst handling vehicles that I ever drove. <laughs> God, that's awesome. And then when you start playing with the paddles, it does have a little bit of a burble. It's a lot quieter than I, I would like it to be. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know what? I think it has just the right amount of noise for most people, considering the fact that you did pay about $20,000 extra for the V8. So you want to know that you're driving something special. And this car certainly feels special with the acceleration, the noise, and the responsiveness of these paddles. Actually, it's an eight-speed ZF automatic. It is really, really good at just being in the right gear. I love that it downshifts to first. For you, there are a lot of uh, dual clutches that I've tried that, won't, that will barely even do that. So that's very impressive. But uh, when you also leave the transmission to its own devices and automatic, it just, in drive, it just shifts really nicely, really smooth. This is with me just driving normally. You can hear, you can always get a sense that that V8 is making a good noise. It has so much power. This thing, anytime you just want to have a little fun, just put your foot down. Now, granted, um, the rest of the driving dynamics, I'm actually going to put it into it's just normal setting. I had it in dynamic earlier. So in this setting, the exhaust actually gets slightly quieter. The air springs get a little bit softer. The steering lightens up a little bit. Uh, and it just feels like the last Defender that I drove. I don't really feel the extra weight that the V8 pulls around. Um, but, you know, this car has a really decent ride quality. I will say that these 22 inch wheels have affected the ride quality a little bit. It's a little more jittery than I remembered in the last Defender. Uh, but in terms of quietness, this is just way more refined than any Jeep Wrangler or Ford Bronco. I mean, the uh, the way this vehicle is sealed up, there's very little wind and road noise. Um, it feels really solid. Uh, the last Defenders that I've, dr I've driven felt a little bit like pre-production models. This one, I will say, feels very good. Um, it has a really tight, uh, well-built feel, well-oiled machine feel. The steering, as you can see, really slow. I can literally do this. The car doesn't do anything. Uh, and visibility in here is actually quite good. The rear spare tire does intrude a little bit, but if that, you can get rid of that by uh, switching this little flip here and it'll, uh, or flipping this little switch here and it'll go into a digital rear view mirror mode. But overall, I'm impressed. This is a nice driving vehicle. The Defender's always been. The V8 takes it to the next level. It just is a pricey proposition. And the 90 still comes with those, you know, problems that I hated about the first one that I drove. The cargo area is really small. And then getting into the back seat is just kind of a chore. Um, now, the 110 is the one I would go with, but there is that new 130 that I haven't had a chance to see in person. It does look a little bit odd and ungainly in the photos with how long it is. And I don't even know the dimensions of it. Land Rover hasn't disclosed that. Uh, but overall, Comfortable seats, um, quiet interior. Uh, the interior itself doesn't feel quite as luxurious as a six-figure price tag would suggest, but it does feel dur durable. And then in my weeks worth of testing, uh, gas prices are stupid expensive right now. So this vehicle uh, has been averaging around 15 MPG around town, which is bang on with the EPA's targets. Uh, on the highway, it got around 18 MPG, so a little bit below the EPA's numbers. Uh, premium gas is, rec is required. Remember, this has a 20-gallon gas tank. Uh, but overall, very, very nice car to drive on a daily basis, but I would probably, not probably, I would definitely skip the 90 and at least go for the 110 version of this car. So when I first had a chance to drive the new Land Rover Defender, I was just smitten with this car, especially with the six cylinder engine. I just thought it was the perfect combination of power uh, and efficiency for this vehicle. Now, after spending some time driving the V8 model, the V8 model has me torn because I love the V8 pull. This thing did zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds, which is just stupid fast. It matches the acceleration of the last Wrangler 392 V8 that I tested. Haven't had a chance to drive the Raptor yet. The suspension changes that Land Rover has made hasn't really improved the handling. The ride quality suffers slightly with the 22 inch wheels. So my recommendation is go to the 20 inch wheels. And I also don't like the fact that the 90 still is a very compromised vehicle. So I would skip the 90, go for the 110 model and also be okay with the fact that you, if you want the V8, this vehicle is, a limit, is only available in a limited amount of colors. The six cylinder and the four cylinder is what expands the color palettes, but it is still a very unique looking uh, SUV. This thing still turns heads everywhere you take it. And the beauty about it is Land Rover has made the V8 model so incredibly stealth that most of you probably wouldn't even notice. You have to look for the V8 badge on the side, look for the uh, special brake calipers, look for the quad exhaust, and then of course see the taillights of this thing whenever you pass all of those high performance uh, sports sedans or sports cars because of just how quick this vehicle is. Now the downfall with the V8 model is if you guys want eight cylinders, you're going to have to pay a pretty penny because this car starts at around $53,000 
$1,000 for a base Defender with the four-cylinder engine. If you want the V8, it's roughly double the price. This car starts at $108,000 with the V8. That's in the 90 trim. It's about a $20,000 premium versus a Defender X trim level, which is the highest up with the six-cylinder engine, which is the mild hybrid turbocharged straight six. So 20 grand is a steep, expensive proposition. It makes this car roughly $40,000 more versus a Jeep Wrangler 392 with the V8, and a Ford Bronco is also roughly about $30,000 less expensive. My tester here, because it's the Carpathian edition, basically for an extra $8,000, gives you the matte finish paint, the black accents. Uh, this one here with destination comes to a grand total of $115,000. Now, $115,000 is a lot of money for an interior that doesn't feel that luxurious, but uh, it is a, certainly a very unique car, and if you want something that's different, this is basically one of the few options out there. I mean, you cannot even get the Wrangler 392 or Bronco with two doors, uh, the Bronco Raptor. Remember, those high-performance versions only come with four doors. So yes, Land Rover has a unique proposition, but my recommendation, spend the extra $4,000 for the 110, get a more practical car, and you're still looking at around 118 grand for a fully loaded version, which is, again, stupid money, but if you guys are a huge Land Rover fan, you're a huge Defender fan, this is certainly one of the most unique looking SUVs out on the market. With all, this, all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Land Rover Defender 90 Carpathian Edition with that 5 liter supercharged V8. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.